morning. Thanks for joining me. This is Pastor Pete at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. It's Thursday, April 8th, 2021. It's uh, time for coffee, like we have every Thursday, Coffee with Pete, and I'm glad you're joining me. Uh, today I'm having clear liquid. Uh, I'm in a season of uh, prayer and fasting and not drinking coffee or caffeine or uh, any sugary stuff, so just some plain water, some bubbly water. Uh, but join me nevertheless. It's fellowship time, and it's also time for us to open God's Word and maybe little, learn some more about Him, some more about us, and how we live and walk and join together. So here's to you. And again, thanks for joining me and my family, my Abundant Life family, and my friends across the country. Today I want to take a look at a story that's in the book of Exodus, 33rd chapter of Exodus. And, and it's uh, to set the stage for you, this is the story where God, or Exodus is the story where God is establishing his relationship with the nation of Israel, and he's doing it through Moses. And so we find some really interesting things about how God is building trust with Moses. Moses is still, even after the burning bush and all the plagues and all the cross the Red Sea and everything, here they are now out in the wilderness, and God is uh, still trying to convince Moses that uh, He's going to be there taking care of him. It's all going to be okay. But Exodus 33, let's start with the 11th verse uh, of Exodus 33. Um, the scene is that when Moses would wanted to talk with God, uh, he didn't always go to the mountain. That's where God gave him the Ten Commandments. But other than that, they had a tent. And they set the tent up outside of the camp. And uh, God, Moses would go to the tent to meet God. And when he did, then the cloud... Uh, fire and a cloud of smoke would come down and guard the door to the tent. Moses would go in, and the people would all stand at their own doors and pray while Moses was in talking with God, because they knew he'd come out and he'd have instruction and direction and, and more about how we're going to actually live through this whole thing. We look at what's going on in the Bible, and we know the story. They wandered for 40 day, forty years. They, they ate quail and, and manna, and they got water from a rock. We know that, like, because of having gone through it, you know, read it or been in Sunday school or whatever, to them, to them it was a brand new experience. No one had ever done anything like this before. And so here they were, they, they were curious and, and puzzling and questioning every single day. Like, we don't want to hear any more bad news from God because he's going to ask us to do more stuff that just sounds impossible. But yet Moses would go and then he would obey. But Moses still also struggled. And there were times, actually, God... Just prior to this, God was going to get rid of them all. He was just going to wipe them all off and start over again. And Moses said, no, these are your people. Don't do that. So here's the, that's the setup. Here's the story. Starting in verse 11 of, of chapter 33. It said, the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. But I want to accent that thing first. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. So Moses and God were used to having this honest exchange and conversation. And so that's when we sometimes see Moses really so bold. Like, how can he even speak to God that way? Because God had established that relationship with him. God had made a way for face to face. Um, it goes on in verse 12. It says, Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. And yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. And now therefore, God, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways, that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. These are your people. And God said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us, so that we are distinct, I and your people, from every other people on the face of this earth? And the Lord said to Moses, This very thing that you have spoken I will do for you, because you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Some pretty remarkable statements here. Moses is basically almost establishing a contract. Like, God, you've asked us to do some stuff, but I need even more confidence. Even though you've done all this other stuff before, I need, still need this confidence. Who's going? Will you go? 
I won't, don't want to go unless you go. You can't send us from here. I want you to be with us as we go. And then remember, they're speaking as friends face to face. The other thing was verse 13, very interesting. Uh, Moses says, um, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. It feels like going in a circle, right? If I have found favor, like, and he's still questioning it. God had already said, you have found favor in my sight. He goes, well, if I found favor in your sight, show me your ways. Teach me. Help me to understand how to do this right so that I can know you. And and then in order knowing you, then it, it makes it so it's possible. It says, in order that I may continue to find favor. And, of course, I'm adding some words here that really bring the nuance. And here's the key to this verse. God has said, I found favor in my sight. Moses is saying, banking on that. He's saying, okay, God, I found favor in your sight. Because of that, because of the favor I have in your sight, now show me your ways. Show me how I'm supposed to do this because I want to know you. So teach me. Teach me the proper process and the methods, and etc. Because I want to be absolutely sure that I'm doing it your way. Because I want to continue to find favor in your sight. I don't count it as a one-time thing. I don't count it as, I did that once and I'm good to go and I now I can just go wherever God sends me. God's response is, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amazing statement, honestly. God says, Moses says, teach me so that I can do it. And I just want to know you so that I can be sure that I'm doing it right. And... I want to continue to find favor. I don't want to mess up. I want to keep getting good grades. And God says, I'm going to go with you. It's going to be okay. I'm going to go with you. And not only that, I'm going to give you rest. Now, rest, they didn't get rest from walking. They didn't get to just sit down and have uh, have the bus come pick them up. In this context, giving rest has to do with the concept that they will not be at war. They will not find themselves always being harassed by outsiders. God will be the one who provides the victories for them because uh, they do fight their way through some of this time, but there's times when they don't. And so, but God's going to be the one who's going to provide everything they need. So basically God is saying, I'm going with you. And as we go moment by moment, count on me, trust me in all ways for all things. Moses responds with saying, okay, that sounds good. Promise me that it's going to be obvious that you're with us. Not just the tip, the promise that we have. This is not even keeping a secret. He says, God, make it clear that I and your people are distinctly different. Make it so obvious to everybody who sees us and meets us that you're with us, that, that we won't have to worry about them messing with us because you're going to be present for I and your people. Make it obvious. God says, because you have found favor in my eyes, in my sight, I will do as you have asked. You have found favor. I do know you by name, and it will be obvious that I am with you. And so God agrees to this arrangement. God says, yes, I see what you're saying, and I want it to be so, and I see that you're, you're interested in, in desiring and willing to be taught and to lead. But don't get too full of yourself, knowing, thinking that you can do it on your own. I'm with you every step of the way. If you jump way ahead in the story, you know that Moses did trust God most of the way. And then Moses did some things in his own power. And God says, because you've done that, you don't get to go into the promised land. You can see it from here, but you don't get to enter. Only those who have trusted me this whole way. So this whole passage, this, this section is really fascinating, interesting to me. It's really talking to us now, today, about the importance of our relationship with each other. Moses has a deep passion and love for his people, the people that God sent him to. And he's got a deep passion and love for God. And so he wants to have a relationship. And even as it said, they spoke to each other face to face as friends. It took a lot of courage and a lot of commitment. And it takes a lot of work to express what you really need what you're really afraid of, what what you really hope to have happen. Um, it takes a lot of work to build that trust and to have those conversations, even when there's a risk of being disappointed because the other person might say, no, I can't do that. 
And it takes a lot of trust to hear the other person say, you're going down the wrong way. Moses, I'm not going to give you information to help you be good at this. Just be good at listening to me and being with me. Come and continue to talk with me and I'll keep guiding you. And so I guess maybe that's our lesson for today. Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, the curtain was torn. He rose again from the dead and he made a way for us to have direct conversations with God. We no longer need an intercessor on this earth. We can speak directly with him face to face as friends. And so God is saying the same thing to us today. I'm with you and I will be with you. Trust me. Learn from me. Know me. Desire to know me. And desire to continue finding favor in my sight by continuing to be one of the followers of my son Jesus. And if you will do that, then I will give you rest. I will give you provision. I will give you what you need. So friends, my prayer for you today, um, like almost every day, is that you will have, you will find favor in God's eyes. And the way we do that is by declaring that his son Jesus is our Lord, our Savior, the one that we follow. And we trust and count on his spirit who's with us now today in us and working through us to guide us down the path of life day by day by day. I pray that if you don't know that truth yet, if you don't have that relationship with God, that you'll just take a few moments and have a conversation with him face to face. Pour out your heart and listen to his. And come to that place of trust in him where he's going to guide you and provide for you each and every day. God bless you, friends. I look forward to when we can be together in person. In the meantime, I'm so glad we're together week by week with coffee. And I just encourage you to be with God every day.